So now we're going to look at a different model. In this model, we have the time, uh, the temperature is related to time in a co anything that cools by a rule called Newton's law of cooling. So many of you have to take physics and in physics classes you'll talk about Newton's law of cooling among other things that Newton discovered. Newton was shaped our physics that we know today in a way that's probably more profound and, and far-reaching than even Einstein's uh, theory of relativity because it really defines how uh, systems work on Earth. Now, Newton's law of cooling has this little E in it. And remember, we talked about scary math in movies. E always is, predict, is ex exported in um, math and movies. Now, E, for computer scientists, they actually write E, and I'm going to put this up here so you can see it, um, in terms of uh, like a function. They write EXP of T. And that's really important because E with raised to the mi with uh, E with uh, minus RT as the exponent um, seems like it should be something that follows the laws of exponents, but you're better off thinking of E as a function, just like sine of T, cosine of T, secant of T, EXP of T. So that's what this thing, this object is. And um, we on the WebAssign yesterday talked about graphing this thing and this graph of this function that you should have drawn in the last part should have looked something like this. It starts out at 98.6 and then it levels off. Now where does it level off? Where can't it go below? Somebody's got to answer me. I'm waiting for an answer. Where? What line can't the temperature go below? Jake, did anybody answer me? Hopefully somebody answered me. And hopefully they said that the body temperature cannot go below the temperature of the room. This is uh, something you learn about in probably general chemistry, and it's called thermal equilibrium. So that if you have a small medium and a big medium, the small medium will hit the equilibrium of the big, big medium in temperature. So it's really nice to see these other areas of uh, science coming together here, unified by mathematics. So what we have here is a model, a mathematical expression, that yields this picture that you should have drawn on your in-class assignment in what the theoretical picture should look like uh, as opposed to the rule of the 1.5 which probably you should have decided was not a good model and was totally off especially the longer you go on. Alright so let's look at this model. There's th what we call parameters. There's three parameters here. The first parameter is the C the second parameter is this R, and the third parameter is this K. The K, this e to the minus RT, what happens to it as time goes to infinity, as time goes on, is this damps out to zero. So you can actually see that by plugging in numbers for R and C and seeing that actually when you put in T equals a thousand hours, you're going to get zero. That means if this term here was struck out, long term this is where it's leveling off at and if you told me that this place that it levels off is at room temperature what that means is that it tells me the value of that k that k has to be room temperature now please pay attention because this will be on the quiz um, this is something that I, I use this one example just to teach everything about exponentials and logs and I don't use the web assign because I think this is a little bit more interesting and it's real so I now have disposed of the parameter k. Now parameters for us in modeling are, are specific to that individual or that uh, specific application. In this case it's the body that's a dead body that's dying. So I can actually use data from a, an actual body where I knew the temperature to dispose of these other two parameters and when I do dispose of them I will actually have a formula where I can plug in time and it will spit me out what the temperature is. One thing that I want to point out that I forgot to mention earlier is this value E. E is a symbol and the symbol represents the, this number 2.717. It's like pi. It's a transcendental number. And if you 
punch e to the one or a e you have an e button on your calculator i actually have the calculator sitting next to me so i'll look and see where it is on the 89 it's right next to actually it's uh if you look at the um there's a green version on mine it's one of the shift choices but you should get uh you should be able to click e to the one let me see what happens if i punch that it's not allowing me to do it so I guess I haven't played around with this calculator but you can do it on your calculator and someone in the class should know how to do this because uh, it's really important that you're able to calculate these things on the calculator because there's no way you can do them by hand but E is around 2.717 so the first step is to plug in K which I already have room temperature and I'm assuming room temperature is 70 degrees is the room temperature in Richardson Hall 70 degrees? I doubt it. Um, and the room temperature right here is actually 70 degrees because I've turned up the heat in my in my home. So I'm in my home doing the lecture for class. In my home, in my pajamas, with my cat next to me, and a calculator. All right, step two. Next, we're going to dispose of the value for C. And we do this by plugging in time equals zero. This is called a baseline condition or an initial condition in an experiment. So in this formula up here, I'm going to plug in t equals 0. Any base that's not 0, when you raise it to the 0 power, you get a 1. So e to the minus r times 0 is e to the 0, which is equal to 1. Try it out on your calculators. 2 raised to the 0, you get 1. 5 raised to the 0, you get 1. Pi raised to the 0, you get 1. So this entire object here becomes 1. So I get C plus 70. Well, that's what happens when I plug in T equals 0. But I also know from the data um, that I know what body temperature should be at time equals zero. It's 98.6, assuming that the person had normal body temperature. That might be a false assumption. If they had a fever, for example, it wouldn't be 98.6. But I'm going to make the assumption that they, at time equals zero, they had normal body temperature. And then I can solve for C. And that eliminates one of the, one of the parameters. Boy, we shouldn't have cell phones next to us when we do this, right? All right, so now I have only one more parameter left to dispose of, and then I have a formula, and that's this R. I'm going to take some real data. I'm going to take another point, not time equals zero. So I took time equals three. And at time equals three, I took this 96.5. And I'm going to go through the same process. At t equals 3, I know that the y value has to be 96.5. So I'm going to plug in now, step 3, I'm going to plug in t equals 3, in for t. And now um, I have that the y value is known, it's 96.5, and I'm going to solve this equation for r. How do I do that? Well first, here's my equation, I'm going to start out. The first step is to remove the number. So I'm going to remove the 70 over to the right side by subtraction. That leaves me with this equation, 28.6 e to the minus rt is equal to 26.5. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by this 28.6. I'm doing that so I can isolate this expression and eventually be able to get at that R. The second, the next step is to ln both sides. ln, or natural log, is the inverse function of exponentials, or e's. So what they do um, is that they knock each other out. So um, right now I put a decimal expansion for this. I can actually crunch it on my calculator. And there is actually an LN button. I have to shift to get it. I'm going to actually turn on my calculator, which you can't see, and do second function LN of 5, for example, and see what happens. It didn't like it. So I have probably broken my calculator. Let me see. Uh, 
Ooh. The ca calculator's too complicated. I can't use it. Well, it's on your calculator, and hopefully you have you're you more used to your calculator than I am. Oh, I, I see what's going on. They have a Y equals editor. Okay, now I have something. Okay. So, um, I did the natural log of this side, and I get minus 0 0.08. And now I'm going to get rid of this exponential by killing it out with the natural log. This is the rule. It's a new rule, and I want you to add it to your laws of exponents. So now you're going to have seven laws of exponents, and that's that natural log of e to the x is x, and e to the natural log of x is also x. So they are inverse functions of each other, much like arc sine was with sine, cosine inverse was with uh, cosine, cosine, so forth. So um, notice here that I've replaced the t with a 3, which I should have done earlier. Um, so the t is a 3. And now I can, it, these two things kill each other out, and I have minus r times 3 is equal to minus 0 0.08. So we're talking Red Hawk Learning Center math. We can just solve for the r. Minus r, I divide by 3 on both sides, and I get minus r is approximately minus 0 0.03. So that, now I've disposed of the last um, parameter. And so the full model is t of t is equal to 28.6 e to the minus 0 0.03 t plus 70. You can plot and predict body temperature now from this new model. So for example, if I wanted to know what happens at time equals 1, I just plug in 1 for t and it cranks out and gives me 97.8. If I plugged in 2 into this formula, I will get another number. And I'd like you to figure out what that number is and check your answers in class to make sure you're doing it right because what I found from last semester is the most difficult thing for students is to figure out the order of operations of entering these things into your calculator. So that's it for my explanation and um, I do want to go to the worksheet you have Newton's law of cooling here I use data from number four. I want you to use the data from number five and again dispose of the parameters and go through the steps as I just did. Now what you can do is you can go back to the steps and ask uh, Mr. Dines to go back and actually set it up so that you can watch it again if needed or you can use your cell phones and get this, this video from your playlist online. So now what I'd like you to do on number 11 is to um, estimate how, you know, estimate how the new, test the new model on the data from number 4. So fit the model parameters using data from number 5 and then use those to plug and chug. Go back to this table and instead of estimating by the 1.5 rule, plug in the values in your new formula to the new model and see how they compare like we did before. And there is no video four. There's only a video three. We're done. Um, and that you should be able to see a difference between using the formula in the way that this new formula. It should be a lot better. But I'd like to, you to use the numbers and actually write down the sentence and then turn in your work. One per group with all three names written on it. All right. So I will see you Monday. I will probably be giving you something like this on the exam, on the quiz on Monday, where you'll have to calculate the parameters like I've done here. If you want more data, just email me. I'll send you all the data. I, I pulled it from a paper. So practice and make sure you can do it. It's not tough. Just go through the steps.